I know you have a million things to do. You need to take care of your health and good nutrition. You need to learn useful skills and nurture good relationships. You need to complete your projects. But right now, there is only one thing that you need and can do. And to help you to find out what is the one thing in your life right now, let's summarize Gary Keller's book, The One Thing, which shows how focus can bring extraordinary results to your life. The more things you do, the worse you do. Many people believe that they can do many things at the same time. They even boast of being able to balance many activities at the same time. They believe that everything matters equally. They are people who try to make money as a professional investor, to have the body of an Olympic athlete, to cook like a professional chef, to meditate like a monk, and still have fun and travel the world like a digital nomad. Now, imagine trying to do all of this and also continuing to pay every day your bills and take care of your family. When all our commitments appear to be important and urgent, well, we have a problem. The idea that everything matters equally and therefore we must do many things at the same time is one of the lies that most affects your ability to focus. But it's not the only lie. There is a myth that we must put our time and attention a little bit on everything. And this way, we would have small steps in several directions. And this would mean that we're balancing everything at the same time. But this idea is mistaken. It is not efficient for you to try to advance slowly at the same time in multiple directions. You have to go far enough on one thing and then go on to the next destination. For example, imagine that uh, you would like to start a business. And in addition to that, you would also like to learn to speak German. You'd better stay focused on creating a well-run, profitable business first. And then once you reach that big goal of making your business profitable, then you will go to your next big goal of learning to speak fluent German. It is better for you to look for great results one at a time than to divide your focus and do everything at the same time accepting mediocre results from having a poorly managed unprofitable company and speaking basic German full of mistakes. When you set a big goal and you go for it, you will develop along the way. Your thinking, your skills, your relationships, your sense of what is possible all grow on your journey towards your big goal. On the other hand, small goals don't really require extraordinary actions and they will not lead to extraordinary results. It is easy for you to start a company that doesn't sell anything. It is easy to just open a free app to try to learn German and memorize just a couple of words and say everything wrong. It is easy to split your focus and accept mediocre results with the illusion that you're being balanced. And even in a balanced life, you will have to ignore several important areas of your life. Instead of being afraid of the great, you should fear the mediocre. Mediocrity is a waste of life because you're not looking to reach your maximum potential, you see. In other words, the idea of a balanced and optimized life in practice, is something impossible to achieve. No matter how hard you try to do a few things in a balanced way, there will always be other incomplete aspects in your life. Going back to our example, even if you manage to divide your time perfectly and then you can learn German and run your company, you still may find that you didn't assign enough time for other things, for your friendships, for your family, to eat well, to practice an interesting hobby, to learn to speak Mandarin, for example. This example shows that it is impossible to do a little bit of everything. You need to make choices. Then do what is really important and accept that there will be other areas of your life that will be incomplete. Accepting that some things will be incomplete, that's the price to pay for achieving great results. This is focusing on the one the problem with depending on perfect discipline is that perfection does not exist. There is a myth that if you live a life with perfect discipline, you will be able to do more and better. The problem is that such perfect discipline is simply impossible. You would need to behave like a robot that faithfully follows 
the original schedule, maintaining perfect morning and evening routines, eating correctly 100% of the time, and always acting on reason and not emotion. Of course, nobody in the world has perfect discipline, so looking for something impossible will only bring you frustration. You don't have to do everything perfectly. You just need to do the right thing. And when you're moving forward, you're doing the right thing, the most important thing, then you can free yourself from the unrealistic expectation of having to have perfect discipline in everything. When you see an apparently disciplined person, what you're actually seeing is a person who has built several different useful habits for his own life. They probably concentrated their energy in building one good habit, focusing on that until the activity became autopilot. So, the trick to success is to choose the right habit and focus on it until the habit is established in your life. But it only works if you stick to one habit at a time. Leaving aside some things for a while, that's the price you pay to have an extraordinary result in the long run. You cannot depend on willpower alone to accomplish what is important. Another myth is that if you have the willpower, you will then be able to do more even when discipline fails. This is a myth that we talked about in episode 131 of the Hello Say Charata series. The summary is as follows. Your willpower is an extremely limited resource, which is spent as you use it. It's a little bit similar to your phone battery. Willpower is not always available, and because of that, you should not create a strategy that depends on willpower. The path to productivity is simplicity. Think of something that you have done well, in your life. It could be an activity at school, a sport, or some professional work or event. When you achieve that level of success, my question is, were you focused only on that activity? Or was your attention divided, dispersed in many different things? If you look closely, it is likely that whenever you had great success in one area, you have focused your concentration on one thing. And the opposite is also true. Whenever you have obtained average results, your attention was probably divided between several different concerns. The simpler you are when you're pursuing a goal, the better. You probably heard already of the Pareto Principle, which says that 80% or more of your results come from 20% or less of your actions. But do you take this principle of being simple in your daily life seriously? Being simple means ignoring all the things that you could do to worry just about what you should be doing. It means recognizing that not everything is of equal importance and clearly identifying the things that are the most important. In short, it means understanding that extraordinary results are directly determined by your ability to focus on one thing. Your amount of time and energy is limited, and that is why you must be selective and strategic. We all tend to want to do too many things at the same time. We want to do well at work, but without leaving health behind. Then we want to take care of health, but we also want to have fun. And we want fun, but without harming our finances. And so we try to do everything at the same time and end up doing nothing right. The first step, therefore, is to be clear that you have a limited amount of time and energy. When you spread this energy in different activities, you end up being too dispersed. You want to have your achievements to be accumulating. But for that, you need to do less things and not do more things. I know this sounds a little bit contradictory, but it is not. If you think of your goals as a series of dominoes aligned, when you focus your energy on knocking down the first piece, the others will fall in sequence more easily, taking advantage of the energy of the previous piece. Your success must be built sequentially, one piece at a time. Do not confuse lists with strategy. If you don't have a strategy, your to-do list will only keep you busy. You can survive one day after another feeling that you're always working, but you need to create a strategy in order to actually make each finished task help you to complete the next tasks. And for your strategy, instead of thinking about a task list, think about a list of successes. And a task list becomes a list of successes when you apply the Pareto Principle, focusing on the tasks, the few tasks, that represent the most good results that you can get. Unfortunately, the dominoes metaphor does not really perfectly apply to our 
real daily life. The biggest challenge is that in real life, things almost never line up for us. They almost never show us exactly where to start, where to put our energy first. So, how can we do this? We can use the focus question. The focus question is the best and fastest way to have more focus right away. Knowing how to define your goals is the key to achieving extraordinary results in a short time. The problem is that defining which task to focus on has never been an easy activity. The focus question is a powerful question that is able to help you to define your focus with great precision. This question is capable of raising both long-term and also practical questions as you go each task and what you should focus on next. Pay attention! And write this question down, as it can revolutionize your personal productivity system. The focus question is as follows. What is the one thing that you can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? What is this one thing that you can do that by doing this thing, all the rest of your to-do list becomes easier or even unnecessary? By answering that question, you aim to achieve clarity in what you should do. Focus your energy, your time, and your resources exclusively on that. Until that one thing is done, everything else is a distraction. See that when you answer that question, you are at the same time aiming for your long-term goals, but also for what you should and must be doing right now, to get on the right path and not waste your time and energy on irrelevant activities. The focus question is interesting because it shows how great your life can be and also how simple you need to be to achieve all that greatness. Think of it as a map or a compass that will get you where you want to go in the simplest possible way. You will hardly get extraordinary results in your life if you behave randomly. <laughs> you cannot choose which of the tasks in your list you're going to do and perform depending on your willpower or your interest at a particular time. That is random. Those who do this end up spending their whole life jumping from one branch to another branch, putting their energy and time here and there without ever being able to accomplish great things. Extraordinary results are rarely the result of chance. To achieve this kind of result, you need to make the right choices and put your time and energy into what you have chosen. The focus question allows you to better decide what you should do right now. Your difficulty in focusing on one thing comes from the fear that you cannot temporarily set aside some areas. Now, maybe you're thinking that right now you cannot focus all your energy and time and resources just on one thing. Come on. You cannot dedicate yourself exclusively to work and leave your family behind. Uh -uh -uh. You cannot dedicate yourself exclusively to your health and leave your finances behind. No. This thought that you cannot focus on one thing makes you make the mistake of dividing your time and your efforts and multiple tasks at the same time in hope of reaching a balanced life. If that's your case, then I ask, has it worked for you? Are you really advancing in all those areas at the same time with extraordinary results? Or are you simply having mediocre achievements? With an average career, average health, average, mediocre finances, family environment with a tedious routine. If you're not satisfied with the results you're devoting yourself to multiple goals simultaneously, then try the one thing strategy. In this way, you will not be working in all areas all at the same time, but also you will not leave them for long aside. You will take care of them later. Even if you focus on one thing, the other areas in your life will not be left behind for long. The first step is to identify where you're going to focus your efforts. What is the only one thing that you can do right now so that everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? The answer depends on your current life situation. For example, if you have currently an illness, an acute crisis, then all your efforts have to be directed towards your health. If you have that that is growing exponentially, you need to focus on your finances. If you're having serious family problems, you need to focus on your family. Even if you have all these problems at the same time, then you still need to choose only one and focus on it. As strange as it may seem, you need to set aside the other areas, at least for a while. And if you do that, what will happen? When you put all your energy, time and resources in one thing, 
it is very likely that you will get extraordinary results. And when that happens, you can build a system so that result becomes a habit, it crystallizes in your life. For example, let's say that you've got a <coughs> highly contagious virus. You concentrate all your efforts on not contaminating other people and also on healing yourself, leaving aside your work, your family, and even your finances for a while. You don't abandon completely any of these things, but you do only the basics, only the minimum, and you focus all your attention on health. With total focus, your health will improve much more quickly. And when that happens, you create a system so that the activities that you've done become a habit. Habits consume much less energy, time, and resources when they're formed. Now, with the health problem solved, you are now encouraged to attack a second problem. So then again, you have to ask yourself, what is the one thing that I can do so that by doing that, all the rest becomes easier or unnecessary? And then you focus on your career or in your family or your finances, whatever. You totally focus on that new one thing. You get extraordinary results again, and then you move on to the next goal. And so, as in a domino effect in which each success drives the next, you build an extraordinary life of several areas in your life, even if you have to momentarily leave some of them aside. Align your priorities each day by repeating the focus question from time to time. The focus question addresses what is broader in your life and also what is the focus on the next task to be done so you can find the right direction and also the right attitude that needs your attention. And you must have a life plan that gives you a long-term direction, that guides you to where you want to go. But it is difficult to make long-term plans because unforeseen events, they just happen. So ideally, you should start each single day by asking yourself, what is the one thing that I can do today? So that by doing so, all the rest becomes easier or perhaps even unnecessary. Ideally, today's answer should be similar to the previous day. If one day you focus on health, and the other day you focus on career, and the other day you focus on your family, and in fact, you're not really focusing on anything. Aligning your priorities does not mean changing priorities each day, but rather readjusting your performance in the face of a change in a context. Repeating the focus question daily also helps you to break down big goals into smaller tasks. For example, if you keep asking yourself, what can I do to double sales in six months? It's best to turn this into a focus question. What is the one thing that I can do today to double sales in six months? So that by doing so, all the rest becomes easier or unnecessary. This question will take you to the core of the task, the most important thing. Until today's task is done, everything else is a distraction. No one can achieve great results alone. It is always possible to learn from others. The first thing to do is to ask yourself, has anyone else studied or managed to do this or anything else like that? The answer is almost always yes. Then. Your investigation begins with finding out what others have learned so that you can use what these people have done. You do not necessarily need to have direct contact with the person who achieved such a result. You can find the lessons documented objectively in many good books and published works. This information will be useful for you to be able to adopt the procedures that lead to the same results. The second step is to understand how that person's solution can apply to your life with the conditions and the resources that you have today. This will give you an original answer so that you have to reinvent yourself in some way to implement this solution. Your focus should bring intention, priority, and productivity together in a block of time. In Martin Seligman's model of positive psychology, there are five factors that contribute to happiness. Positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishments. And among these, engagement and meaning are the most important. If you can become more engaged in what you're doing, finding ways to make sense of life, then you also find lasting happiness. And this happiness comes from the fact that you're now daily carrying out actions aimed and a greater purpose. Because of this, your focus should always bring together intention, priority, and productivity. Intention to achieve great goals, one at a time. Priority to always focus your energy, your time, your resources on the one thing that you can do to make everything else unnecessary. And productivity 
to forget everything else and focus exclusively on that priority, reserving blocks of time for each task. Imagine that, starting today, you had the ability to focus like a laser beam on one thing. This laser beam would be focused on a single obstacle, a single barrier that separates what you are today from what you really want to become. Now, imagine that you have the ability to destroy, one by one, each one of these barriers, knowing exactly what to do next, always acting with intention, with priority, with productivity. What would your career be like if you managed to do that? What would your health, your finances, your family environment be like? And the good news is that you have this superpower. All you have to do is to identify it. What is this one thing that you can do so that by doing this one thing, all the rest of your to-do list becomes easier or maybe even unnecessary? For you who are interested in mastering the art of concentration on one thing, I invite you to know our focus course by accessing arata.se forward slash focus course.